This is the story of my first startup that failed. As my first startup failed, I was forced to join the MNCs which had come to the college, take the placement, and go to Bangalore. Living in Bangalore, the Silicon City of India, gradually over a time period of a year, I started to realize and actually find who were the happy people and the not so happy ones. In this big city, happiness was all about a double digit increment, a 50% hike in your salary when you switch the company. What more? A heart filling weekend spent with friends. But friends, these friends vanished as soon as you moved from your company to another one. It was a pre-designed track for everyone where one would come, stay, and spend according to their level of need or capability. I was losing the track of a happy life. I was losing the control over my, my life. And gradually, I was losing my peace of mind. I thought, we were here to chase our dreams, to make a career, to find something for ourselves, to accomplish big deals in our lives that the society, our family, and our friends expect from us. But what's going on here? We were just losing the pace of our lives. I thought it was the time to hold the horses. It was the time to pack the bags and start finding the real meaning of happiness. I left my job, came back home, and started looking for answers. Where was the answer? My answer lied in my personal finance. I lost the track of my own personal finance. How do I spend my hard-earned money? How do I spend my parents' hard-earned money? Now, with a lot of research, a lot of study, and getting into a lot of field work, where I would meet a lot of professionals from finance, studying from the documentations done by SEBI, the Securities Exchange Board of India, NISM, and a lot of local bodies. I tried to meet as many experts as I could. I tried to figure out what's the basic mantra behind the happiness, behind the peace of mind, and behind your very own personal finance. During my second startup, which is a social enterprise where I work around financial literacy, I found out two very common things from where I started from and where I was. If you look at this picture, there's one thing common. Like, except for me, if you look behind me, in the pictures towards my right, I have people behind me. This is the picture when I joined and a multinational company in Bangalore. It was, it was a training room. All the engineers, all the selected people who had reached their destiny after the college. And on my left, that's a picture from a government school in a rural area. These were the students who were attending a session conducted by us. So the common thing between them is, be them the engineers, or be these the school students, both of them were financially illiterate. Most of us sitting over here have a lot of intellect, a lot of knowledge, and we understand a lot of things. But finance, my own personal finance, nobody taught me that in school. Nobody taught me that in college. And even after that, 
I cannot find anyone teaching me my personal finance. Talking about the moment when you actually realize how would a step-by-step -step thing work with finance, work with starting up, work with your learnings. Coming to the main point of my talk over here, risk, failure, and learning. These are the three vitals of any activity that we do today. We cannot ignore taking risk. If you take risk, we cannot avoid a failure. But my friends, if you haven't failed, you haven't learned for real. If you haven't accepted a failure, you haven't had the experience of the real courage. And if you're not learning from that failure, my friend, you still need an awakening. Talking about how the modern day startups work, modern day startups work on taking a risk quickly, failing quickly, and learning quickly. Quick failures, quick learning. With the help of technology, we are able to compress these failures on a smaller scale and expand the learnings on the larger scales. Now, it's not just about starting up, risking, failing, learning, analyzing, innovating. Moreover, a financial discipline is a catalyst which actually works when you take that risk, when you are ready to fail, when you are open to learn. Talking about financial discipline, what's financial discipline? Okay, to some it might sound like a very big deal. Financial discipline, oh my God, very big words. But on your personal level, financial discipline is just sticking to the terms for a particular period of time. That's it. I have 500 rupees in my pocket. I will not spend it for the next two days. Or maybe I'll spend them today for an activity and I will spend them today. So it's just about sticking to your terms for a particular period of time. Talking about starting up in India. Starting up in India nowadays is moreover in fashion, in trend. Our government is supporting startups, institutions are supporting startups, everyone talks about startups. But the stardom of startups is being confused with the rounds of funding. Two of my startups that I'm working on are bootstrapped. The term bootstrap means you have no external funding, you are working from your own finances, or you are spinning the wheel. Spinning the wheel in a startup means you have customers who are paying, who are paying for your services, who are paying for your products. Well, this is the most boring way to put it. It could be more amusing. How many rounds of funding do you have? How many millions have come in? How many investors do you have? So the stardom of a startup is being confused with the amount of money it has raised. In my words, it's more about creating value than the valuation. It's more about solving the problems than talking about them. It's more about finding a person in need and helping him. The only thing we need to take care about is the financial discipline, the ability to take risk, the boldness to accept your failures, and the courage, the courage to learn from them. Getting towards the end of this talk, Many of us, in fact, almost 90% of the people that we meet every day 
have a similar notion have a similar notion about things about things happening around and about our own daily routines now that's called a bubble bubble of people you know the bubble of a society the bubble of the creatures around you the task of a person who wants to start up the task of a person who wants to create something new is to break that bubble and get out it's not just about thinking out of the box as i said it's about implementing that thinking with courage discipline and ability to learn by this time if i track the numbers and figures of all the things going around here we are creating a lot of data now why would i talk about financial literacy or personal finance and then come to data in this modern technology world everything we do is recorded we make a phone call we make a chat we chat on whatsapp or any other application we book a taxi online we order some food online we transfer any money whatever we do everything is recorded everything is recorded to predict your behavior please don't be so predictable don't become so predictable to the system that your habits make this phenomena of prediction into prescription today technology will give you an option that you may like this tomorrow if you are too much predictable for a very long period of time technology may tell you okay you liked it like this last month this month this is what you have because you were too predictable now i'm prescribing it to you so this level of prediction to prescription works with the data that we create every day the activities we do every day so kindly be cautious my friends don't be too much predictable with your data don't be too much open to the prescriptions make your own choice make your own choice walk your own path and try to lead a life which is just not full of theories not just full of things that have already been done and you spent the whole day or the whole all the days of your life in perfecting what has already been designed just take a step forward and find it for yourself thank you